Hello, DataCon LA. My name is Christian Bordeaux, and today we're going to be talking about how to become a business intelligence analyst. So first off, like, who am I? Um, I'm a senior business intelligence analyst at PlayStation, like I've said before. I'm also a Call of Duty esports photographer. I'm very into gaming myself, and um, I actually went to USC. Um, I did a data boot camp here and then later became a teacher there, as we'll see later on. I'm also a data-driven power lifter, always using data to progress. So a little bit about me. I got my marketing degree in 2016 from Cal State Long Beach. I knew I wanted to be in something with like marketing, technology, and data. And as you can see, level 99 marketing. I even put a pie chart there, even though pie charts are not the best for data visualization. Um, next up, I actually thought like I got my degree in marketing, but I actually ended up being a professional photographer for like a year. I shot for Food Beast and uh, it was a lot of fun. I got to shoot food like this where you just want to lick your screen and, you know, very non-conventional path to data. Then I started discovering like, wow, I looked at these analytics tools of when I started shooting my photos and uh, for this company, Food Beast, and I started noticing whenever I shot stuff, I was actually shooting more than um, what other, uh, like the past photos were doing. So I started realizing that there was a lot of power in data. Moving on, I was like, all right, let's get a job in data. What is it called? So I looked up, it was called data analyst. And then um, I actually got put on a business intelligence team at Machinima. Uh, they're known for red versus blue, um, you know, really big YouTube channel in gaming. Um, later I got acquired. Then um, I actually started working at Warner Brothers. It got acquired and then I actually just worked in the same office and I did business intelligence for all the Warner Brothers movies. So it's really exciting, like um, Ocean's 8, um, all the Harry Potters and stuff like that. Um, so then later on after that, um, I ended up getting laid off from Warner Brothers. And so uh, they got acquired by AT&T, no worries. I was like, you know what? I want to advance my skills again. So I ended up going to USC for Turby um, where I got my master's certification in data analytics and data science. And then later on, I became a TA. Um, and then after my boot camp, I actually landed a job right out of the boot camp as a senior business intelligence analyst at Nike. And then later I got poached by, um, later I got poached by PlayStation. So here we go. Who is this presentation for? Um, this presentation combined data and business you should, and the best solutions an analyst will be. So, <laughs> you know, really what this means is this is recent graduates looking for um, an edge in the data market, data professionals looking to pivot into business intelligence or those who, you know, want to learn and utilize data to optimize business processes. So as we continue on, so here are our objectives for this course and this thing today. DataCon is what is business intelligence, also known as BI? Why do companies need BI? What tools do these people use and what is their day-to-day -day like and how do you land your first business intelligence role? So business intelligence is the process of collecting historical and present data, just kind of like, as you can see here in the SQL databases. So this would usually be like a database administrator, data engineers, um, but anyways, let's continue on. Using statistics and software to analyze the raw information and then lastly, deliver insights to make better future decisions. So what that could kind of look like technically, and we'll dive deeper into this, is you have some sort of like your data is in SQL databases, and then you read it with your data visualizations tools with a Tableau, Power BI. And then you create dashboards and reports that showcase like, all right, how is the company using this data and how can we predict the future essentially? And what did our past look like? So this is the business intelligence life cycle. First, we start at the top with business understanding, then we collect the data, then we prepare the data, then we explore the data to make sure that we have all the proper columns and we know what the row level is. Then we start creating the model, be like, all right, how do we want to like, you know, what kind of graphs do we want to create? Um, and then you're like, all right, does this model make sense? And so model could be machine learning model, but it could also mean like, all right, how do I want to aggregate my data in order to get the right outcome? And then you deploy that model. And so in business intelligence, a model would be kind of like a graph, like a, a, a dashboard of sorts. So let me, let's take through this an example. <clears throat> At Nike, I worked at the photography factory and they wanted to know like, hey, how many photos are we shooting a day? 
Um, and all of the photos are logged in the system, a proprietary system. And um, like they know about about how much, but like they want to know exactly. So this is where like, all right, cool. So the data I need to collect is like the t date timestamp um, and the photo ID. So then that way I know like, all right, cool. How many unique photo IDs were in one particular day? Then we prepare that data. That data is in a timestamp. So you have, you know, the day, the hour, the, the, the seconds and the milliseconds. We just need to, you know, tr date trunk that to a day. Um, then we explore that data. We say like, hey, you know, what other types of shoots are there? We create the model and we, you know, we evaluate it and then we deploy the dashboard that says, hey, um, you use on average this, you make this many photos a day. And then you could say like, all right, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, these are the averages on those days. And then you could even create a line chart where you show like how many photos you've been creating over time, which is really big. So why do companies need BI? Um, it's to make smarter and scalable data-driven decisions. For example, we can analyze this customer behavior, identify ways to increase profit and optimize operations. So here on the right is this dashboard that I use out, out of college. And this is what actually lands me every single job to this date is this dashboard where I, I'm able to just, this is, this is a Tableau dashboard where it lives on Tableau public. And I could just send the link to this dashboard to every single people that I want to apply to. And they're able to actually play and use my data visualization and interact with it. So here we can analyze like, all right, cool. The number, this is a, this is like imagine Walmart data set. It's called the superstore data set, but we, I could figure out how many customers do we have in the West, East, Central and South America. Um, and this is just like, you know, West coast, New York, California, East coast, blah, blah, blah. Sales per those regions, the number of orders, the average sales per customer. And this is really important data because then they could start making more decisions. Like, all right, cool. Like maybe they want to know like, all right, let's, let's, let's look at which customers are buying what. So we even ranked customers here. And then they could be like, all right, Sean Miller, he has this red line, which means that the profit is really low, but this guy is making a bunch of, we're making a bunch of sales on him at a, at a steep discount. So we need to figure out, all right, how do we actually make money on this guy? Why is this here? We want more people like Tamara Chand where they're uh, high revenue and highly profitable. So this is just a quick example. And then I'll have the link there for you guys later. So how do these pros, like what do they use? So the business intelligence tech stack is Excel. I'll just pull all these up on the screen. So we have Excel. This is like the, the basic, this is what everybody uses and you have to understand the basics. So there's Excel, there's SQL, which are like databases, essentially like if you're not familiar with SQL, just imagine like you have a folder full of Excel files and you're just accessing that. And then you could even do like pivot tables almost in SQL. Um, and then you have Tableau, which is a data visualization um, tool. Then you have your, um, you have your open source tools like Python, which helps you aggregate data, explore data, um, do machine learning and a lot of really cool stuff there. Then you have Amazon. Um, so Amazon, this is really, we'll kind of dive deeper into this. Like you have to understand how like basic cloud computing works as far as like, how do you store data on the cloud and how do you access these cloud um, SQL databases like Amazon Redshift or Postgres or MySQL. And then we have Git and GitHub. And this is where a lot of your code is gonna be committed. Essentially, this is where you can save your code and get it reviewed by other people. So what do business analysts do? So if at the top we have, this is why business intelligence, in my opinion, is super important. At the left, we see Excel reporting. And essentially what people, like just normal people that aren't, that don't know how to use SQL or Tableau, they're taking each one of these data sources like SAP, Salesforce, they're downloading them into Excel files and then doing V lookups on like, oh, maybe we have a customer ID in, in Salesforce and a customer ID in Oracle. And then they're combining it here in, a, in, in Excel. And so one-time export. And then they do, once they combine all this stuff, then they do an analysis and then they put that one-time analysis into Outlook and send email it out to somebody. That's pretty much how I did my earlier jobs. That was just every single day. It would take me like hours, maybe like the whole day to do an analysis that was just weekly. So this is where business intelligence comes in. You get all these data sources, you put them into a data lake like S3, like Amazon S3, and then you have Redshift that is able to read these and put them into table format. And then, um, you know, Python and Airflow to really 
make sure all this stuff can happen. And then once you have all this data into Redshift, you can use Tableau, Power BI, and I think this is Google Data Studio. Um, and you can access these data, this, these databases and produce these reports um, in real time or how often you wanna refresh these. And the report delivery, you could actually just deliver it right on the platform. Like Tableau has its own Tableau server. And essentially, a user can go inside and get that, you know, that weekly report on the left, but have it refreshed every 30 minutes. So it creates infinite, like infinitely more valuable because the data is less stale and is more in real time. So essentially you just have like, all right, you're going to do it like every five minutes, you're going to pull from Salesforce and dump all that data into S3, Amazon S3. And then you can decide how often do you want to pull from, you know, Redshift or any other type of tool. You could use an Azure stack as well, but I'm more familiar with the AWS stack. So these features in Excel and BI, the, re, the like look at all these green check boxes, right? Resilience and elasticity, essentially like this BI platform is gonna last a lot longer because in Excel, you can have a lot of human error and um, you know it reduces a lot of that. There's a flexibility and scalability, especially if the rows are getting more than a million in Excel, it starts to poop out. But you know, SQL databases can take hundreds of millions, if not billions, of rows. Um, automation, you know, instead of one person, every imagine you had a daily report that took you five hours. That's five times five days a week. That's 25 hours. In this BI report, you can essentially like set the whole report up in an hour in less time and never have to do it again and just have to check up on it. So that one hour you spent is a really good investment because you never kind of have to go back there because you just set all of these automations. The running costs um, is cheaper because if you have less manpower doing these Excel reports and you have a BI team, then it's, you can start scaling up so many different reports and then the security as well if you're sending excel files over email it can easily be forwarded and sent to somebody that doesn't have the proper um things to see that so how do you land your first business intelligence role well while searching for work i did a lot of stuff i read 100 plus de personal development books and this like i watched 500 plus hours of linkedin learning just trying to figure out what i wanted to do i can like for me, I had no mentor. I just, I was all self-learning. I completed a Udacity course on business intelligence. Um, and then lastly, I enrolled in the USC data bootcamp because you know what? I, le I had learned all this stuff, but I didn't know how they were put together or how to do anything really. Like I, I was just like, all right, cool. I know a little bit of Python. I know a little bit of SQL. I know a little bit of Tableau. And then going to this bootcamp really helped me put it all together. And after I went to the bootcamp, um, pretty much I just continued to learn. Like you're always going to be learning. I, the bootcamp teaches you, you know, breadth but where you really have to know later is like, all right, what stuff do I want to start learning? For business intelligence, I'm going to tell you the different tools or that we talked about already. Like those are the wells that you want to start learning. And um, I watched a hundred plus hours of Tableau training, the free ones on their website. Um, and lastly, uh, I created 10 plus data projects. And ultimately that's what all of this stuff has to do with. Like, you know, these first one, two, three, four, five bullet points are really just to create those 10 projects because those projects is going to be the proof, at least the initial proof to get a uh, recruiter to look at this and like, wow, this person's worth interviewing. So that is your key to the interview, showing them that you can do this stuff without all of the experience. Because sometimes like in today's market, it's so hard to, um, for job, there's not enough, there's not enough people to fill these jobs. So as a result, um, in 2019, I got nine job offers. This is during while I was in school. Um, I landed a job at Nike and then Sony subsequently right afterwards. Um, I quadrupled my pay um, and it's crazy. Tech salaries are nuts. All with little to no data worker experience. So for me, like, I came from a business background and then got into data and I just found like, you know, this is, this is it. And so if you're interested in business, you're interested in data and you're interested in making money, um, I recommend business intelligence all the way. So how do you land your first role? Uh, we're going to dive into these four different topics. We're going to learn the tech stack, create projects, optimize your LinkedIn and resume, and ultimately learn how to job hunt. This is gonna be a lot. Honestly, I could do a whole pro uh, process on each one of these pieces, but here we go. 
Take a screenshot of this. This is learn the key tech stack. The free stuff is like Udacity, Solo Learn, Coursera, Code, Code Academy. You could audit those classes. So Udacity has free stuff, but they also have expensive stuff as well. So then we have the $1 sign. Um, and this is Udemy, EDX, Data Camp, Data Quest, Code Academy, LinkedIn Learning. These usually have like a monthly price. And then the most expensive ways are like Udacity Nano Degrees, Data Boot Camps, and maybe you just want to get an MS, a Master's of Science or a Master's in Business and Data. And that's, you know, 40K plus. So, you know, ultimately you want to learn this tech stack, but it's not enough to learn it. You can know it. But if you don't show the application of that, it's worthless. So um, what you want to do is create projects. And these projects can be PDFs, you know, slides, which I highly recommend, or like you could put on your GitHub, depending on what kind of um, role you want to get into. But business intelligence, absolutely, this is a visual platform. So when you want to create projects, like where do you get data from? So these are the most popular places where you can get public data sets, Kaggle, Google data sets, and you can actually use the Yelp API if you'd like to use that data, but I'd recommend just downloading these CSVs or Excel sheets from Kaggle and Google data sets and start going wild. Um, share it, share your projects on LinkedIn and GitHub. And um, on my projects are on LinkedIn. You, if you go to my page um, at the end, well, I'll have my QR code there, but you can just look up Christian Bordeaux. Um, and you can find me there. You can find my projects there that landed me Nike and PlayStation and absolutely use it in job applications. They say, Hey, if you want to attach a PDF or anything, definitely add that bad boy. All right. So now we're going to get to learn the basics of job hunting. There's resume building, which is super important. That sucks that they don't teach us in schools. And I'm talking to all the new grads or per people currently studying this. Um, but also it's good for people that are just trying to pivot out, um, professional branding on LinkedIn use talent agencies and ultimately network. So this is the summary and we're gonna dive deeper into each one of these. So for me, going to post-college, I realized, you know, I didn't have a job. I had no experience in data. I had no coding knowledge, no internships, no resume, no LinkedIn. And this is where I was like, you know, I'm biting, you know, my camera or whatever, my, my laptop. And I was just like, dang. So if you're in college, um, realize that you need to start filling these gaps. These are the things that you need to start doing, or if you're trying to pivot um, and you have no previous data, let's, let's jump in. So resume building, what makes a good resume? What does a good one look like? What should I include on it? And these are really important questions. So I'm gonna have you, everybody here, um, look at these two resumes. Inside your mind, I want the resume, the one on the left, and the one on the right, the one with the blue on the right and then the plain one on the left. Which one do you think um, lands jobs and why? So I'm gonna show you which one it is. And this is the resume that got me Nike. It is this, the most basic, bare bones, use Arial font throughout the whole thing. And this is it, this is it. And why is that? Um, it's because of applicant tracking systems. If you are putting like, your whole, essentially you wanna make, you wanna submit your um, resume in a doc format, like a document, like Word doc, or you know Google slide or Google docs format, because it's the easiest for computers to read. And um, yeah, and if, essentially if you're submitting PDFs or like photos, they just get auto trashed. So if you're applying to jobs, it's just, you want your resume to be seen. So this is an ATS friendly, applicant tracking system friendly um, thing. So that's a quick summary on resumes. Obviously there's so much more. There's like action words and making sure, and I recommend jobhero.com if you wanna figure out how to create these bullet points. They pretty much have somebody that's already written them and you can just copy and paste them in and you will be godsend. LinkedIn tips. Um, so LinkedIn is really important. Why LinkedIn, right? This is the professional networking um, platform, and essentially, I get all, I get, I get hit up ev for everything professional, jobs, and even speaking here on DataCon LA. So Bosch came up, was like, "Hey, Christian, I love you for you to speak." I'm like, "Heck yeah!" So LinkedIn tips is make sure you fill in everything um, at a high level. So. Um, for me, actually, before we got, get into this, I actually, with LinkedIn, when I actually landed my job at Nike because of LinkedIn, and LinkedIn actually even said like, yo, thank you so much for using our platform, and they gave me this, 
they gave me this box that had like a candle in it and free premium. So pretty much I feel like I know how to use LinkedIn. <laughs> so you want to customize your URL. Um, what that means is like at the top, you want it to be linkedin.com uh, forward slash in forward slash and then your first and last name, hopefully. Um, the next piece is turn on looking for job opportunities and just always leave this on. Even the people at LinkedIn, my friends at LinkedIn are like, yeah, just leave this on and then recruiters will hit you up. And then, you know, they, they'll tell you like, Hey, we're looking for this role is 70,000 a year, a hundred thousand a year, 200,000 a year. And you'd be able to know like, all right, cool. When you're at your current job, you're like wondering like, all right, cool. Am I getting paid the right amount? And then these people will tell you like, Hey, we're looking for this type of money. And that's a really good way of doing it. Even if you're not looking for work. Get 500 plus connections. This just shows uh, people on LinkedIn, especially these recruiters that like, hey, if this person has 500 plus connections, this person's working on their LinkedIn. They care about their professional image. <clears throat> All right, that was a really quick. I could do a whole presentation on LinkedIn. Um, utilize talent agencies. So what are talent agents? Um, essentially, it's their job to find you a job and they make money when you get that job. So these are just a couple examples of uh, talent agencies. There are so many, but these are the three that helped me. Tech System landed me Nike. Vaco landed me some old jobs. And TCG landed me a lot of interviews that I unfortunately did not get, but it's okay. Um, they, get, they get paid when you get paid, and you need to have a decent LinkedIn and a resume. So take a screenshot of this, and we're going to move on. So the next piece is network and be part of a professional organization because you got to network to get work, baby. And that really is the case. Um, so networking is like right now you're here at this conference, right? Make sure you connect with me on LinkedIn and start a conference. It's like, Hey, I heard your presentation. I'd love to connect with you. And here I have some questions that I can ask. So, you know, go to relevant events like DataCon LA and a new app that's coming out or that's came out is called clubhouse it's actually public now where you can actually follow me there i actually own the data science and analytics com community there uh group and we have conversations all around business intelligence data analytics data science data engineering software engineering and so forth so go to relevant data events all right the next step is participate in data user groups like meetup.com um i know with COVID, it's been really tough with that but i know a lot of these groups exist um, be prepared when you're, when you're networking, have an intention, have your resume already done and just easily be like, have it already in a, in a, in a, a link to it in your Google drive so that you can just always send it or, you know, you just have it where you just can send it all the time. I recommend all, keeping all your resumes in Google. That's where I have them all. And then whenever I want to tailor them to a specific role, I can have your LinkedIn decked out, make sure on your LinkedIn, you show what you want to like. Tell me the story, like make sure like your profile, if you want to get into business intelligence, make it scream business intelligence. I need to see the words business intelligence on there. And I also need to see projects that showcase that you are a business intelligence analyst, even if you have no experience. Um, business cards are for more in person. Um, and then just research, like know what, know what you want and what you're looking for. Have an elevator pitch. So for me, like whenever I, I go to an event, it's like, hi, my name is Christian Bordeaux. I'm a senior business intelligence analyst at PlayStation and I love data. What do you do? Boom. So that's the elevator pitch and it redirects it right back to the other person. And that tells enough uh, the other person like enough about like, okay, cool. This guy's in gaming and this guy's in data. Like, what can we talk about? You know, how can we like leverage this? And like, and maybe I could be like, if I'm a student, like, hey, my name is Christian and I'm a student. I really, I really want to get into business intelligence. I'd love to hear what, kind of work you do and why you like to do it. So that would be a really good conversation starter. Talk to people, connect to people on LinkedIn. That's an obvious one, get that 500 plus. Um, and then schedule virtual coffees or even re regular coffees. I think COVID is dying down enough where you can get informational interviews and learn more about them. You know, um, I would always say, hey, try to get them lunch. If that doesn't work, get them coffee. If that doesn't work, phone call. That's That's what I would do. Because it in person really does make it a whole lot, and make sure you drive to them and you buy their stuff. Um, ask about openings at their work. This is really important because um, at PlayStation, if I if I refer you and you get hired, I get a kickback. I get money. 
Uh, it's a, it's a, like, you know, a couple thousand dollars. So, you know, always ask for openings because it's, sometimes it's a really big win-win situation. Other times at some tech firms are like, all right, a referral is going to refer, refer bad on the person referring if you don't get the job. So um, always ask. So to conclude, this was how to become a business intelligence analyst. What it, is it? And we finally come to the end. So if you want to get a job in business intelligence, focus on learning the foundations of data and using these widely known tools, Excel, SQL, Python, Tableau. And you can, you know, you can go back in this video and look at where you should learn those tools. Utilize projects to fill in experience gaps and learn tools. Um, absolutely do that. If you want to see an example, go to my LinkedIn, which we'll have in the next slide. Develop your personal brand to reflect data expertise, even if you have no experience, because this is 2021 and you can put whatever you want on the internet. So make sure you look like a boss. All right. And my light got cut out. Let's try to turn it on. There we go. <laughs> and there we go. So um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. And um, yeah. I look forward to seeing all of you guys in the questions and answers, and I'll be here on that day to answer your questions. So feel free to connect. And when you do connect, make sure to add a note, say from Datacon LA, and I'll automatically connect with you. So thank you so much for having me. My name is Christian, and I'm out. Peace.